dear students you are welcome in this class and today is 28th of march 2022 and time is 6 pm in the evening so today uh, we are going to discuss methodological interpretation of fertilizer experiment first you understand methodological interpretation of fertilizer experiment so normally we conduct fertilizer experiments to see the response of fertilizer that when we apply a particular quantity of a fertilizer here fertilizer means you can consider nutrients maybe nitrogen maybe phosphorus maybe potassium so please take fertilizer and nutrients for the time being synonymous so we apply fertilizer to correct the deficiency of certain nutrients and we can use graded dose graded dose means 20 40 60 80 etc and we can see up to what level up to what dose you are getting the response so that is decided by conducting the fertilizer experiment now you need to apply some methodology to understand the meaning of the fertilizer experiment how to interpret your results you have used certain level of nutrients or fertilizers and you have got certain quantity of yields at respective dose of the fertilizer now how to do interpretation one interpretation is that you can go for response curve fitting so response curve fitting will give you relationship between fertilizer and yield this will give you a so methodological interpretation of fertilizer experiment are these mainly with the response to fertilizer or response to nutrient how much yield how much extra yield you get due, due to application of fertilizer over the control that is one way and that we can find for this we can find the relationship between input and output input is your fertilizer output suppose it is yield then through response curve fitting you can find the relationship between input and output fertilizer and yield the method is called as response curve fitting so methodology is related to response curve fitting one number two uh, if you want to interpret you can take two sources of fertilizer or combination of nutrients you can take time of application of fertilizer sources of fertilizer many things you can take and you can go for response curve fitting suppose you got four levels of nitrogen and you get two different sources one is your uh, ammonium sulfate other is urea so you can compare the effectiveness of these fertilizer whether ammonium sulfate is giving uh, yield at maximum yield or yield of uh, a crop is equal in two cases when you apply urea at the rate of 60 kg n per hectare if you apply ammonium sulfate it gives you same yield at 40 kg n per hectare this is just assumption so you can compare the effectiveness of different sources methods of application and you can also test varieties varieties you can take five varieties and you can take 10 levels of fertilizer and you can see their interaction if interaction is significant then we can go for response curve fitting of five varieties at different levels and we can find out the optimum level of nutrients or optimum dose of fertilizer so overall all these three uh, topics are interrelated methodological interpretation of fertilizer experiment simply mean to work out the relationship between input application your nutrient and your yield or growth parameter and economics of fertilization of fertilizer use here means to find out the best or the most suitable dose or optimum dose of the fertilizer and both these are possible by employing response curve fitting once we have applied uh, employed response curve fitting we can employ certain economic principle to find out the optimum dose of the fertilizer so you can see the 
uh, certain references I am giving, and if you need them, I can share some of them, uh, like principles and procedure of statistics by Steele and Torrey, Gomez and Gomez, statistical procedure for agricultural research. Yesterday, I shared this book to all of you, and this is the book that will help you in your experimental design, experimental design and certain fundamental tests, statistical tests, methods, and also linear relationship and quadratic relationship. Means it deals with the response curve fitting also. So I have taken major part of this lecture from uh, this Gomez and Gomez book. So this is important book, but it mainly deals with statistics. Estimating fertilizer requirement, a quantitative approach by J.D. Colwell. Very good book on estimating fertilizer requirement. It is uh, available in IRA library. Then Barrow and J comparing the effectiveness of fertilizers. And then Black CA, I forgot to send you this book. BA, uh, Black CA, Soil Fertility Evaluation and Control. Excellent book on this subject. To find out the optimum level of fertilizers Wilcox agrobiology, your Mischerlich equation, means kind of physiological relationship of plants to the soil fertility. So this is very important book for students uh, in the discipline of agronomy and soil science. So if you want, I can share this book. And then Monson and Dahl, economics of fertilizer use in crop production. So there are many references, but what I feel that you can have this one book by Gomez and Gomez, and one book by C.A. Black. These two books would be enough for you, Gomez, Gomez, and C.A. Black. Now, learning objectives of all the three lectures, today and, and tomorrow and day after tomorrow are fitting of response curve. When you get data from the fertilizer experiment, how to find fit the response curve the difference in correlation and regression analysis. What are the differences be between these two? And then fitting the linear and quadratic equation. This is also known as response curve fitting. Fitting linear and quadratic equation, you can call it response curve fitting. Uh, similarly, if you can call it equation, some people can call it equation, some can call it models, and some can call it curves. If you have an equation, if you have an equation, you can very easily convert it into a curve. You can plot the point on the graph. So equation can be represented by graphical form also, which will, which will be a curve. So there is no difference in curve and equation. The data will remain same. same. Only in equation, you have letters and numer numerals. In curves, you have lines, but uh, you can make you can represent an equation in the form of a curve. So you can say equation, models, and curves. They have the same meaning. There is no difference in all these three. It is a trend of the people these days that they call it model. Instead of equation, they call them models, actually. Then through this quadratic equation, you can determine the optimum dose of the fertilizer or optimum economic dose. Then we will see what are other uses of response curves and then fitting of response curves in Excel. I will teach you how to fit the response curves in Excel sheets. And then after fitting the curve, means after finding out the equation, how to interpret, interpretation of the results obtained in Excel. Finding the best response curve, means which motor model will fit your data the best. You will find out the model that fits your data the best. So finding the best response curve or model. So I seek your kind attention. Uh, everybody should, should be careful. If you miss one point or one line, it will be difficult to understand the subsequent lines or subsequent section. So better you understand every line, every word. If you do not understand, ask me, stop me. Now, usually I started with Yield, yield depends on growth. I've already discussed with you. And growth is influenced by several factors. And factors I have discussed already. 
you are seeing genetic factors, environmental factors, management factors, and socioeconomic factors. These factors will affect the growth, and you want to provide the best or optimum quantity of these growth factors. But some of them are present in the soil. Some of them you need to add from outside. So if you have optimized the factors, then you will get better yields. And finally, you will get better economic returns. But on the right side in the pink, you can see to optimize these factors like water, atmosphere, nutrients, temperature, soil, light, and even you have biotic factors, some disease will come. So to optimize these factors, to manage these factors very well, you need to add something from outside, which is known as input. So on extreme right in pink color, you are seeing the input. For example, irrigation. If there is shortage of water in soil, you will apply certain quantity of irrigation. So you can have different treatments of irrigation. In some plots, you will apply two centimeter. In some plots, you will apply three. In others, you will apply four centimeter. And then you can study effect of irrigation on the growth of the crop. And finally, on the yield. So you have three levels of irrigation. And one level, you can keep control. So you get four levels of irrigation. And you can see the plant behavior the growth of the plant or the yield of the crop. And then seeing the yield, you can optimize, you can find out which irrigation level gave the best growth. And then you can do the economics of that irrigation level. So this is how your inputs are used to optimize the factors, factors of the growth. Similarly, your insect pest disease incidence is there, which is going to damage your crop. These biotic factors weeds, insect, pest, disease. So you will be requiring to use certain chemicals. So chemicals, you can use different doses of the chemical. For even for herbicide, uh, herbicide, if you want to control weeds, you use herbicide, you can take 0.5, 1 kg, 1.5 kg, 2 kg quantity of herbicide and see the response on the crop, how much weeds are controlled or how much improvement is there in the growth of the Crop. So you can record data of herbicide on weeds as well as on the uh, crop. So you can make some relation, make some similarly to optimize the nutrient levels, you need to apply fertilizer in a particular kind of soil. Then how much fertilizer should I use that gives the best growth and best economic return. So you can see the three lines on the bottom, higher yields, but at optimum levels. It increases returns from output. So you need higher yields, but at the optimum level of input. Higher yields per unit of input means you want to improve the efficiency of the inputs. More, this will result in more returns per unit of input that will reduce the cost of uh, that input. Opti overall, you can see optimize the yield and levels of input. So you need to find out the best combination of the plant growth or yield and the inputs so that you get increased returns or increased profit. <clears throat> now, question comes, now we restrict to fertilizer. We are not going for weeds or some irrigation or some other inputs, but response curve fitting can be used for any of the input which have quantitative data. It cannot be used for qualitative data. Qualitative data is that uh, my color is black, his color is color is white, his color is uh, blue like this. So that is your qualitative data, which describes something. And quantitative data is in figures, is in values. 22, 3, 5, 10, 50. This is quantitative data. So if you have your input in the form of quantitative data. And then output, you get growth of the crop, you get biomass, you get leaf area index, you get grain yield. So with any parameter, you can make the relationship of the input. So suppose with fertilizer, we are making the relationship of yield, then it will be yield fertilizer function or yield fertilizer equation 
or yield fertilizer response curve. <clears throat> so now we see that we are going to apply fertilizer. Then how much fertilizer should I use? How to decide the quantity of the fertilizer? So there are different methods of soil fertility evaluation. Soil fertility can be evaluated by different methods and we can see the status of nutrients in soil as well as in plant. And then how to decide that how much quantity of fertilizer or nutrients should be applied. So in this case, visual plant diagnosis. So you can see the deficiency symptoms of different nutrients. Many nutrients have characteristically different uh, deficiency symptoms. Some have very common deficiency symptoms, but many uh, symptoms are easily distinguishable. So even you are able to, sometimes you are able to identify that this uh, deficiency is uh, related to nitrogen. You are sure, okay, you are sure that these uh, deficiency symptoms are related to phosphorus deficiency. You have become sure. Okay. Then how can you decide that how much nitrogen or phosphorus should I apply? You cannot know. You can know that plant is deficient, but by this method or by this observation, you cannot decide the quantity of the fertilizer. What is next option? Next option is that you can go for plant tissue test. These are actually qualitative tests. You take the extract of the plant parts, say leaf, you can take the leaf, take the extract from the leaf and, and certain tests are available, which are very rapid tests. And those, those tests can tell you the, the level of nutrient, low, medium or high. So it can not tell you the concentration of the nutrient. It can tell you relative content that this is deficient or this is low in iron medium in iron or high in iron. So these plant tissue tests are also of no use, not much use. They cannot tell you the quantity of fertilizer to be applied. Then you can go for quantitative analysis of plant tissues, which is called as plant chemical analysis. You can have several tests of chemical analysis of plant, extract the nutrients from the plants, and then you can uh, test them for nitrogen phosphorus, and you can exactly know the concentration of the nutrient in plant tissues or plant parts. And then already you know the critical values. Critical values of nutrients are available. That for rice, for example, in, in leaves at 25 days after tilling or after planting, at tilling stage in rice, there should be about 2.5% nitrogen concentration in the shoot. So this is known to us for all the plants, all the crop plants, the critical concentration are available. If you analyze your plant and you find that it is at the critical level or below the critical level, then you can be assured that plant is suffering from deficiency of a particular nutrient. But again, you cannot tell the quantity of fertilizer to be applied based upon the critical concentration of the nutrient in the plant. Then comes the chemical analysis of soil, or you call it soil testing. So you can test soil for available nutrients, available NPK, available micronutrient, available sulfur, magnesium, or whatever you like. So you can test the soil for availability of the nutrients. And then you have rating chart. Rating chart you know that uh, if your plant is low, medium, high, so you will know the status of the nutrient, but you will not know the supplying capacity of the soil, how much it can be supplied from the soil, how much if I apply fertilizer, how much it, it can be contributed by the fertilizer. So again, just your soil testing will not help you to tell the farmer how much fertilizer to be applied. Soil testi testing only is not enough to tell the farmers, to tell the uh, grower that how much quantity of fertilizer should be applied. Then what to do? You have done soil testing, you have done plant testing, but still you don't know how much fertilizer to be applied. For this, one advanced thing is that go for the port experiments. 
So some port experiment can be conducted and some data can be generated, but they are also not very useful. They can tell you some deficiency symptoms because these ports are not representing the true field conditions. Soil depth in the port can be 20 centimeter, 30 centimeter, but soil depth in the real field may be different. The water movement may be different in the real field condition than the port. So port experiments are also not useful. So final, finally, what is left there, you can conduct the field experiment. And then from field experiment, you can develop the response curves based upon your soil test values. And then uh, you can go for response curve fitting. So finally, field experiments are the best way to decide the quantity of fertilizer to be applied under a particular soil conditions under a particular climatic conditions, as well as for a specific crop. Their nutrient requirements are crop specific, soil specific. One kind of soil in two different kind of soils. If you are growing one kind of plant, then you may need different quantity of the fertilizer. So uh, things are highly variable in case of uh, soil and agriculture. Now you see critical level is that level of concentration of a nutrient in the plant or in soil that is likely to result 90% of the maximum yield. So suppose uh, your nutrient is there, means uh, nutrient is freely available. There is no deficiency of a particular nutrient in the soil. It is sufficiently available and crop is not suffering any deficiency. So that will be your maximum possible yield. That will be your 100% yield, maximum possible yield. Then suddenly in one kind of soil, there is deficiency of nutrient. If there is 10% reduction in the growth or 10% reduction in the yield or more than 10%, 10 or more than 10% reduction in the yield, or you get 90% of the maximum possible yield, at that particular point of time, the concentration of nutrient in soil or in plant parts is called as critical concentration for deficiency in soil or critical concentration for deficiency in plant. Similarly, you can have higher side also. Certain nutrients have toxicity also, like your iron, manganese, copper, zinc, they can be toxic. So sometimes aluminum toxicity. So sometimes you can have toxicity of certain nutrients. So you also got concentration of nutrients for toxicity also. So that higher level of nutrient in soil or plant where you get 10% reduction in yield or where you get 90% uh, of the maximum possible growth or yield of crop at that particular point of time concentration of nutrient in soil or plant will be called as critical concentration for toxicity in soil, critical concentration for toxicity in plant. So you have four kind of critical levels or critical concentration, two in soil and two in plant. Now you see this, this kind of chart you must have seen. So here on x-axis, you got increasing level of nutrient the concentration of nutrient is increasing on x-axis as you move from left to right. It is increasing in soil as well as in plant. On y-axis, you go the increasing growth or you can consider it as yield. So here your growth or yield is dependent variable. And on x-axis, the level of nutrient is your independent variable, uh, which, is, uh, which is causing variation in the dependent variable. So you can see in the first section A, acute deficiency. So it is very acute deficiency in this region because the status of nutrient is very low in soil and plant. And then you move to the next section, B part. Here you get critical value. Means concentration is not giving you 100% growth or yield of the crop. It is 10% or less. See this dot dot, big dot, solid uh, circle, 
and on the left side if you take so it is about 90 percent so here you get critical level of nutrient rest i will discuss in some other time in soil fertility course here the purpose is to tell you that there is some critical level of nutrient and that critical level of nutrient cannot tell you the quantity of fertilizer to be applied to overcome this critical deficiency Now, these are the critical levels of nutrients for uh, soil as well as for plant tissues. For example, zinc, DTPA extractant, and you get 0.6 ppm. 0.6 ppm or microgram per gram. And then plant tissue, it is 10 to 20. So this is critical level for zinc is in soil as well as in plant. So similarly, you can see for boron in uh, soil, it is 0.5 microgram per gram or PPM in plant, it is 5 to 30. So we move to next link. <laughs> now you see uh, last slide, you have seen the kit about information about critical level. Now, just uh, I'm giving you a, a list of the methods for evaluation of soil fertility. I just discussed them. So this is just a summary. You can add some more methods for evaluation of soil fertility. These methods are used to see the status of the nutrients in soil or in plant. That is the basic purpose. So, but all these methods, they are not sufficient. They are not able to tell you quantity of nutrient to be applied. So I will of course discuss these methods in another course, but uh, they are just indicative. They are just indicative. You need to conduct the fertilizer experiment. It steps in interpretation of results obtained by conducting fertilizer experiment. Now you want to decide the optimum rate of fertilizer and you have conducted a fertilizer experiment. Now what should you do? how you can find the economics of fertilizer use or how you can find the best dose or optimum dose of the fertilizer. So first step is to conduct the field experiment on fertilizer. Number two, you will get the results. You will re record mostly in agronomy, we record yield, we record growth parameters, we re record several observations on yield attributes, swell parameters and so on. So results are obtained. Suppose results are in the form of yield, but you can have results in the form of plant height, result in the form of number of leaves, leaf area index, dry matter, whatever you like, thousand grain weight, whatever you want, you can uh, take the result in that form also for academic purpose. But for economics purpose, you need to record the yield. Then this yield is obtained, then you normally go for F test. You have designs like RBD, split pro design, or some factorial designs, and then you go for F test. In F test, you see whether your treatments are significant or not. Here also, you have some fertilizer levels, and you want to see whether uh, the, the differences in yield are significant due to fertilizer application, or your F test is significant. When your F test is significant, that means your results are significant. Point number four, once your results are significant, then you go for correlation and regression analysis. So this is also known as response curve fitting. So response curve can be fitted by using correlation and regression analysis. Remember, response curves are fitted by doing correlation and regression analysis. I repeat, response curve fitting is done, is accomplished by following correlation and regression analysis. So basic knowledge of correlation and regression is necessary. Then once we have fitted the curve, I will explain you what is response curve fitting. Uh, once we have fitted the curve, then we will apply certain economic principles for or to find out the optimum dose of fertilizer. And first we need to uh, have the response curve fitting. So there are different kinds of response curves. We can have a straight line 
we can have quadratic, we can have cubic, but for all these curves, we need to find an equation. So you need to have one linear equation and one quadratic equation or cubic equation, depending upon the nature of the data. So slowly you will uh, follow the things. Now, what is response curve? It is functional relationship between input and output. Like I told you, discussed about production functions. So it is a small part of the production function. Response curve, which is just like your production curve. So actually for curve also, you need some equations. What I mean to say, if you develop some equations, those equations can be converted in the form of a curve. So what is response curve? Functional relationship between input and output will be a response equation. And from this equation, you can develop a curve. Equation can be represented in graphical form, response curve. The relationship between yield and fertilizer rate is fertilizer yield function with a general mathematical form, model or equation. Model estimated from experimental data will give a, give a realistic mathematical representation of the biological relationship indicated by the data. What does it mean? Model estimated from experimental data. So actually you have experimental data. Suppose you have conducted a fertilizer experiment, levels were 0, 40, 80, 120 or 160. Okay, there were four or five levels and you have recorded the yield of rice. So now for every level of nitrogen, you have yield. So you cannot join the points. On x-axis, you can take your uh, nitrogen levels. On y-axis, you can take your yield. So you cannot uh, join these points. Uh, what was the yield at zero? What was the yield at 40, 80? You cannot join those points. You need to estimate a line to represent that data. You need to estimate a line to estimate to make some prediction because you have used 0, 40, 80, but you want to know what will be the yield at 60. Yield at 60, how to know it? So you need to have a representative line, a line that can represent that actual data. That line will be your uh, response curve or that line will be your regression line. You can call it regression line or response curve. So model estimated that will be your equation or curve from experimental data will give a realistic mathematical representation of the biological relationship indicated by the data. Biological relationship means uh, how these fertilizer levels or nitrogen is related to growth or yield of the crop. Now see types of response curve, there are different types uh, first degree response curve, linear, it is a straight line. Second degree, second degree means power of x. These are actually polynomials. So first degree means y is equal to a plus bx. So x power is one, therefore degree one. And the relations equation is linear equation. And the, if you convert it into a curve, that will be a straight line. Then second degree polynomial is a quadratic equation and curve is parabola. Third degree is cubic and cubic parabola. Fourth, quadratic and quadratic parabola is the name of the curve and so on. A production function or response function, they are same, is a mathematical expression that ex describes the physical relationship. Remember, it is physical relationship, not economic relationship between input and output. Y is equal to F into x1, x2, x3, there can be many inputs. Many inputs can be there, irrigation, fertilizer, or many uh, levels of fertilizer. Now see the shape of different curves. Linear curve is first one. You can see a straight line. A straight line is linear curve. You see number two is quadratic curve. Number three is cubic curve. Number fourth is quartic curve. And number fifth is your exponential curve. So you can see in linear, quadratic, cubic, you can see the number of terms, how many terms are there. So in linear, you got one term. In quadratic, you got two terms. Terms means x squared plus x. And then in cubic, you get three terms, x cubed, x squared, and x. So this is how this shape 
I'm just interested to show you the shape of three curves, linear, quadratic, and cubic that you are seeing here. Now, there can be equations can be of two types, exponential and polynomials. In exponential equations, <coughs> the variable is the power, variable is the exponent. So we are not going to deal with the exponential equations. We are dealing with the polynomial equations or curves. So polynomial models are convenient and popular mathematical forms for empirical regression equations means these regression equations are basically polynomials. So you can see polynomial of degree zero means there is no relationship, x is equal to y, x is equal to y. So there is no relationship for a nil relationship where there is no regression variable. It is not x is equal to y, it is x is equal to zero. Polynomial of degree one for linear or straight line, y is equal to a plus bx. Polynomial of degree 2 is y is equal to a plus bx plus cx square. Degree 3, bx plus cx square plus dx cube. So likewise, these are the equation. Remember one point here that polynomial of degree 2 is also known as quadratic equation. And if I ask you to write the equation, it has all the positive terms. y is equal to a, it is in plus, plus bx plus cx square. The equation is always in plus sign. There is no minus sign. But when we fit the equation, then C value is obtained in minus. Therefore, you can get answer of a problem in minus, but equation as such is all positive. Now, the polynomial of degree one is linear. Response is a straight line. It is already covered. Polynomial of degree two, three, four, five are curvilinear, means they are not linear. If you have power two, three, four, five, then they are non-linear or curvilinear. Yeah. Versions of yeah. the law of the Yeah, Krishna. <laughs> Your microphone is on. You want to ask? Krishna, okay. So, so you can see in uh, linear response is not uh, following law of diminishing return. There is constant return here. But if you have polynomial of degree two, three, four, five, they represent it, various forms of versions of law of diminishing return is quadratic, cubic, and so on. And they are also called as curvilinear or non-linear. Then economic interpretations are made from these functions. So if you have quadratic cubic kind of relationship, you can employ a certain economic principles and you can find out the optimum dose of the fertilizer. You must have heard about Mischellick equation. So one purpose of Mischellick equation was to find out the optimum dose of the fertilizer. Mischellick equation was basically developed to find out the optimum dose of the fertilizer. If you understand the Mischellick equation even today, you can work out the optimum dose of the fertilizer. Under many experiments across the world, people are still using Mischellick equation to work out the optimum economic dose of the fertilizers. The fourth point is procedures for fitting different response functions to experimental data are available. Means you can fit, you can fit the response functions <coughs> to the data. Procedure for applying economic principles to experimental data via different response functions are generally worked out. If you are interested, you can work out the economics from the quadratic or cubic equation. The linear response implies constant returns. Application of economic principles to this function is different from and simpler than the application of curvilinear diminishing return equation. Or rather, you cannot determine the optimum level of nutrients if you get linear response. Means you are getting a constant response to the highest level of nutrient or fertilizer. Now, we come to the response curve fitting. I was talking about response curve. So <clears throat> response equation, I have already told you, it is the relationship between 
independent variable and dependent variable or input and output so no straight line passes exactly through all the points although many can be drawn i have told you that you have conducted a fertilizer experiment you have different doses on x axis different doses on y axis so you can put your points on the graph points of y for respective x you can put on the graph and then you are not authorized to to uh, connect these points by a line you cannot connect these point you need to find out a line that will represent these data and many lines can be drawn many line can be drawn then how to find that this particular line is the best line so you need to find out that line which represent this data very well i show you now see this see this are you seeing a picture on the screen picture on the screen uh, these yes, sir. figures are named number 1 number 2 number 3 number 4 in red see the number 2 suppose on x axis you have 20 40 these are levels of nutrient on y axis you have yield so suppose at 0 you got 3 tons at 20 you got 6 tons at 40 you got 8.5 tons so you have data variety of points are there blue color in figure number 2 variety of points are there so i have just arbitrarily uh, put this line but many lines many such lines can be drawn passing through the data one line i can i can pass through this are you able to see the uh, cursor yes, sir cursor i am moving the cursor on the slide can you see it yes sir, yes, sir. okay yes, so sir. you can yes, you can have one line like this one line like this many lines you can draw but how to know which line will best represent that data the science of knowing this the statistics of knowing the best fit is your response curve fitting you want the best line which represent this data very well or which represent this data the best suppose you go to a tailor and you you have a cloth and you want to get your pant or shirt shirt to be stitched by the tailor tailor and then you will say okay my shirt uh, will be very tight to my skin means uh, then what the tailor will do he will take the measurements he will take the measurements of your hand your chest your waist your neck everywhere he will take the measurement and then he will stitch it and you will be happy okay i got the best fit similarly like a tailor he cuts the cloth and makes the best fit similarly you need to uh, overlook some data and you need to pass through some data to find out a particular line i will tell you i will tell you how to do it so here it is written that many uh no straight line exactly passes through all the points although many can be drawn find a straight line which fits all points better than all no line will pass through all the data some data it will pass uh somewhere near to the data sometimes it can pass through one data but not all data in other language what value of a and b in equation we must take means y is equal to a plus bx if we can find out the value of a and b so that particular equation that particular line will give us the best fit the best fit curve that is your response curve and it is a measure of all closeness of the fit of the various lines which can be drawn so now how to find out the best line that this line could pass most closest to the data how to do it so it is also possible that data data follow the diminishing kind of curve wherein non linear regression would be better fit so if it is not a straight line can a curvy linear can a quadratic line be the better option for this should i always go for fitting linear line or quadratic line that we will understand uh, slowly 
first you try to understand fitting a linear line fitting a linear line so what we do we use method of least square to find out the best fit line to find out the value of a and b or find out the best fit line regression line or regression curve or response curve different names so many names are there we use the method of least square now i explain you what is method of least square and this method of least square is universally used today it is universally used by all the people across the world to find out or the best line fit to find out the regression lines because this is the most scientific method but previously people were using one method that was known as fisher and yates method fisher and yates method to find out the best fit but that method was applicable only when your input interval was equidistant means it was the same difference in input interval suppose it is 20 40 80 means equal interval if it is unequal if it is 0 10 30 90 100 110 then 180 likewise then you cannot use fishers and yates method if your uh, difference in your input is unequal but whether it is unequal or equal the method of least square can be freely used so what is this method of least square a statistical method used to determine a line of subrata <laughs> aya A statistical method used to determine a line of best fit by minimizing the sum of squares created by mathematical. So you need to minimize the sum of square of distances actually, distances from the line. A square is determined by squaring the distance between a data point and the regression line. So first, let me explain to you with the help of the picture. now you see you see this line now you concentrate uh, on uh, figure number 1 figure number 1 yeah somebody's microphone is on you concentrate on figure number 1 here you can see on x axis like you get data of input x 0 20 40 60 on y axis you got yield now support at, at zero you got three tons then you have typed capital y zero in black color then for 20 you got yield y1 capital y1 capital y2 at different levels of input you get different levels of yield and this is known as observed data this is known as observed data the actual data that you recorded in the field so y1 y2 in black is your observed data and then suppose you have made this line the green color line you have made this line arbitrarily now assume you have just made this line arbitrarily now this line you can see some data points are below this line and some data points are above this line and below and above both the data are your observed data or actual data so you can see that this uh, green color data y1 y2 y3 y4 y5 these are your predicted data these are predicted data these are based upon the line the line the points on the line the data point on the line but they are respective data point for observed data points because your actual data and predicted data are in pairs they are in pairs so y1 black y1 green y2 black y2 green so they are in pairs but the black one is your observed data and the green one is your predicted data this data is actually on the line and the just you see think that it is arbitrarily written it is written arbitrarily you see point y6 in y6 your observed data is lower than the predicted data but y5 you get observed data is higher than the y5 your predicted data 
Now in this case, you can see the measure the distances. You can measure the distances from Y1 to Y1, Y2 to Y2 and so on. So you can measure it. You can take the difference of two data, observed data and your predicted data. You can take the difference of individual distance and you square it, you square it. And similarly for Y2 minus Y2, you square it and Y3 and then take the total of all take the total of all that will be total sum of a square that will be your total sum of a square okay and you note down it then you can create another line for that line also you need to do it and see the total sum of a square the line which is giving you lowest total sum of a square is the best fit least sum of a square the line which is giving you least sum means total least sum of squares and squares you are doing square of the distances the blue you are seeing the blue colored line in picture one these are the distances or these are the differences between observed data and between and the predicted data y7 minus y7 why we square it when you make the total of these distances the value will be zero the value will be zero. Therefore, you need to square it to make all the values positive. And the line which is giving you the lowest value of the sum of a square is your uh, least, uh, the, is your, the best fit. The best fit, the line which is giving you least sum of a square is your best fit. And, and I have already suggested you, I have already explained to you how to get the least sum of a square. So this is how you get the least sum of a square. Now this is in picture. <clears throat> now you see picture number, now table. Now you see the table. If I write this, what is there in the picture one, I can write it in the table form also. So output is your actual data. Y0 capital Y0, Y1, Y2, YK. And then expected or predicted value. These values are on the line. On the line, you can see Y0, Y1. There are small Y0, Y1, Y2, so on. <clears throat> now, third line, sum of differences. So you can take the difference of these, capital Y0 minus Y1, and so on. And in the end, you can total the last column. You can make the total of all values and then square it. <clears throat> then square it or what, what, what you can do, you, you make next, next column more, take the difference and square it, and then sum this value, take the total of all the values, that will be minimum. The sum of a square, the line which is giving you least sum of a squares is the best fit. So you can see summation, capital YK minus small YK square should be the least or should be the minimum. So this is method of least square. I tried to explain to you the method of least squares. You see the blue color. A square is determined by squaring the distance between a data point and the regression line. This is also called as regression line or response curve. So these, these are regression lines or response curves. And you can see uh, <clears throat> how to find out the least sum of squares. Now residuals, uh, now you can see, you can see residual. You, you are seeing the differences. Some data will remain unaccounted. This line, this line will represent only the data through which it is passing. And you are seeing the distances. Some data are far away. Some data are near to the line. So some residuals are left or some error is left. If all the data points are passing through the line, there will not be any residual. There will not be any error. So in uh, correlation regression analysis or response curve fitting, the error is referred as residual. So error is equal to residual. Only thing is name is different, but it has got same meaning as your error. So in regression error analysis, the error is the difference in the observed y actual data 
and the predicted y values or estimated value residual is actually the distance of a point from the curve how far is the is the observed data from the curve from the point a residual is positive when the point is above the line and negative when the point is below the line so you can see picture number 1 this y7 so y7 is below the line means your predicted data estimated data is higher so you will get value in minus when you y7 black minus y7 green so you will get result in minus so data which are below the line are lower than the predicted data and data which are above the line are higher are more than the predicted data so you can see in this picture residuals so these are the distances the red color so these are your errors these are your errors but hello hello bro yeah himanshu mic is on himanshu your mic is on so you can see the distances in red color distances in red errors रिमूव सर काम बोला Yeah I think I I I didn't know it I muted him No Somebody anyway now you see the distances so actually what we are doing these red red lines these are the distances these are the errors actually and we can some uh, we can square the distances square the data and take the total and then this total this line is giving a particular total another line will give you particular total the line which is giving you the low uh, least total lowest total is the best fit this is known as method of least squares and this line we can develop we can fit if we can find out the value of a and b the line or the equation y is equal to a plus bx will give us the best fit automatically by default the statistician have already solved our problem they have told us that if you have equation y is equal to a plus bx if you can find out the value of a and b then you will find the equation and then you can plot it so our job is easy we can fit the equation we can find the response curve by this equation if we can find out the value of a and b so now friends uh, before i go into the details of linear equations and other to, uh, let us uh, understand little bit about correlation and regression analysis so correlation analysis because we will be doing it so it provides a measure of the degree of association between the variables normally between the two variables how two variables are related how two variables are associated and the strength of association of two variables can be known by correlation coefficient correlation coefficient will tell us the strength of relationship so it is just kind of qualitative relationship it is not exactly quantitative relationship it is just you can say whether two variables are related or not it will not give you exact idea that uh, how quantitatively two variables are related it can just tell you the strength of relationship now regression analysis describe the effect of one or more variables on a single variable that is dependent variable by expressing the latter as a function of the former means y is equal to function of x so you got certain relationship certain numerical relationship between two variables and the by means of regression analysis so here we develop certain quantitative relationship between variables there can be one ind independent variable and one dependent variable 
or many independent variable and one dependent variable. There can be many permutations and combination in regression analysis. In experiment on yield response to nitrogen, yield is dependent variable and nitrogen rate is independent variable. So you can fix depending upon the nature of study, nature of your variable, you can fix. For me, this variable is independent variable, that is X, and this variable is dependent variable, that is Y. So actually this regression is your nature of relationship. Nature of relationship is your, if I make 1% change in one variable, how much is the change in another variable? Like, you know, elasticity of production. Similarly, here also, if I change 10%, if, if I make 10% change in X, what will be the change in Y? So that numerical relationship can be established by some coefficients, which are known as regression coefficients. This F here is your actually function or regression coefficient. This X is, F is here, is your regression coefficient. So regression analysis is a method for investigating functional relationship, mathematical relationship, quantitative relationship between two variables, independent and dependent variable. The process of finding a mathematical model that is equation that fits the data best is your regression analysis. The whole process that we will see is your regression analysis, but they are normally together. Correlation and regression analysis can be done together, hand in hand. Normally we start with correlation analysis and then go to the regression analysis. So dependent and independent variable. The variable to be predicted or modeled, Y is called the dependent variable. It is also called as response variable. Response variable means variable you are going to predict is your dependent variable or response variable and variable which is responsible for this response is your independent variable. Variable which is responsible, which is causing uh, the change in Y, the causing agent is your independent variable. The variable used to predict Y are called independent variable and denoted by X1, X2, W, whatever you like. And this is known as predictor or explanatory variable. Now, correlation. Correlation exists between two variables when one of them is related to the other in the same way. A scatter plot also you understand. It is a graph in which the paired sample data are plotted with a horizontal axis and vertical y. So when you have paired data, you can plot them on a graph. The linear correlation coefficient measures the strength of linear association between paired quantitative values or data or variables. And it is sometimes also called as Pearson product moment correlation coefficient. The full name of correlation coefficient is Pearson product moment correlation coefficient in honor of Carl Pearson who developed it. Simple and multiple correlation and regression analysis. When only two variables are there, one independent variable, one dependent variable. Then the correlation and regression analysis is simple correlation and regression analysis. If multiple variables are there, means multiple independent variable are affecting one dependent variable, then the relationship is multiple correlation and regression analysis. It can be simple correlation and regression analysis when only two variables are there and multiple correlation and regression analysis, when more than two, three, four, five variables are there, then it will be multiple correlation and regression analysis. Positive correlation is, should I finish it here and start tomorrow or should I finish the topic now? What is your feeling? This is your feeling, you are free to suggest. Uh, I will be happy in either case. If you want me to uh, 